Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Katie. So today I'm going to be looking at making some simple wire rings. I had a request recently just for some really simple, easy to make wire rings. So we're going to make one which is your basic rose ring and then we're going to make a single gemstone ring which is just setting one round gemstone with a drill hole into a ring. So for this I'm going to be using one millimetre wire and I'm also going to be using the size bead that I'm going to be using is an eight millimeter bead. I'm going to be using my ring mandrel, which I prefer to use a steel one. I find that they're easier to use. Also, if you want to create any sort of work hardening or texturing, you can hammer onto this as well. And it's got all the sizes. So mine are all the UK sizes on here. I do find sometimes if you get plastic ones, they kind of have that ridge or that open back, which are not good for making rings really because you're not going to get that full circle. They're great for sizing though still. The pliers that I'm going to be using, I've got a couple of pairs of um, pliers. So I've got chain nose or narrow nose pliers, something that goes to a nice tip so I can work with the ends and my snips. And that's about all I'm going to need. So we're going to get straight on and work on our first ring. So we're going to work on the one with the bead first. So my one millimetre wire, I'm going to use my pearl coloured wire for this one. So I already pre-cut a piece and we're just going to move some of these out of the way. So I've just moved some things out of the way and I've got my piece of wire ready. So this is one millimetre and I've got about 25 centimetres of this uh, one millimetre gauge wire. And I've got my eight millimetre bead, which I'm just going to pop onto my wire, which will go in nice and smoothly. And then following the way that our, our wire is already curving, we're just going to set this wire, this bead it kind of in the centre there. So just find the centre of your wire and just give it a little kink at each side. So you're just kind of pushing against the bead at each side, just so that you know that your that bead is set in that centre position. So then we're going to pick up our ring mandrel. We're going to pop it onto a size down from what we, um, sorry, size up from what we normally would wear or what your customer would wear because we're going to make it smaller when we add the wraps. And then we're going to wrap a right around the back and cross those over so you'll have two wires here and push this all the way back towards the front. So there we go, our ring is, our ring shank is made and now we have two wires, one coming this way and one coming this way. So now what we want to do is shape these around the actual bead of the, the ring. So. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it on the mandrel just for a minute. I'm going to follow this wire as closely as possible. So I'm keeping these wires together as much as possible. And then I'm going to start to shape this around the bead. So I'm just bringing this up and around and keeping it quite close to the bead as possible. Okay, so I've just shaped it around and just leave it down at this side. Now I want to do the same with the other side. So I'm going to turn my mandrel the opposite way around. And I'm going to be working with this wire, so just try and ignore this wire here. And again, keeping your wire as close as possible, following this line of the, uh, the the wire that's going into the bead. And then once you get to the bead, actually just curving this around the actual gemstone as closely as possible. So we've got our gemstone surrounded by wire. So we can just take this out and take a look at it for a second, and then we'll move on to the ring shank. So now we're ready to start forming the little shoulders of the ring. So what we want to do is hold everything together and support everything as much as we can and start wrapping these tails, these tail wires around the actual ring shank. So what we want to do is want to keep everything supported and bring this through. So we're just gonna do one wrap at each side just initially. So bringing that through there and just making sure we're fitting around that stone as nicely as possible. So just take your time and get this to sit nicely on just on this first stage. So that one's come over there and wrapped under and around. So I'm just going to move that out of the way just for a second and do this opposite side. So again around so you can see we've got that stone nicely shaped around and just holding this and 
bring that in nicely. So we can see we've got a nice shape around the gemstone and then we can start tightening these up a little bit using your pliers if you need to. I like to use my pliers and then pushing kind of the main part through with my fingers and then using my pliers just to kind of get a really good kind of leverage and then bringing that to the front again. So I've gone around the shoulder on this one two times but it kind of looks like three because we've got this one here. I may go around again yet, I'm not sure. So and then looking at this side just making sure everything's nicely still set in. You can always pop it back onto your ring mandrel if you think you know it's going out of shape a little bit. So just popping this onto here and shaping this around just making sure we get a nice shape around the gemstone. So just really take your time with it and pull these around and then like I say I like to use my pliers just to kind of pull that in and get that a nice shape so that's coming along nicely there. So around there so I've got two times around there and I think I will just go that one more time just to make sure it's got that really nice look to it. I think this one looks really nice with the three bands around. So just that last time up through here and pulling this in tighter. Because you're using your pliers you can kind of get it to kind of pull in a lot tighter and a little bit more controlled in the way that you're pulling it. So I'm happy with that side. I'm going to cut this up and I'm going to cut it off towards kind of the bottom area so that I can then, I'll bring this in, I can then nip that in so it's actually going to stay away from anything that's near the finger or on the outside. Then I'm going to come around this side, I'm going to put that extra wrap in. So as it's shorter, the harder it has, the shorter the piece of wire is, the harder it is to wrap, especially with your fingers. So definitely if you've got a shorter piece, be utilising your jewellery making pliers. And again, this is where I'm going to do my cut, just on that bottom area there, just there. And making sure I'm cutting, so the flush side of my pliers is closest to my work, so I get a really nice finish like so and then nip that in and then what you can do is just make sure you've pushed back sort of this little section here just so that you know that stone is open as much as possible whoops so just looking at all your ends making sure everything's nipped in and then you can pop it back on your ring mandrel and you can see we've set that really nicely there and if we look at the size, I had gone for an N and we're now on that M mark. So it's gone down a whole ring size. And that's all to do with these um, these wraps that we put in because it's kind of makes the inside size smaller. So there we go. That's one of our rings made. And we're going to move straight on to making the other one. So that is the rose ring. So I'm just going to get the other wire and I'll see you back in a second. So for this one, we're going to be using this uh, rose gold copper coloured wire and there's no gemstone in this one, but we're going to form this really nice kind of rose design shape. It's a very typical um, design that people gravitate to, especially when they're first trying out wire and it is a great one to get you used to handling wire and how to turn wire. So it's definitely one that's um, one that kind of, I would recommend practicing just if you've never used wire before, just to, like I say, get used to the feel of wire and the gate, the feel of different gauges as well. Because I'm going to be using a nut, uh, sorry, a one millimeter, but using a 0.8, you could do that as well. But you'll feel a, a difference in it, and that would be a great experience. So, again, we're going to go for a size bigger than what we uh, intend our ring to be. So I'm going to go for this end mark and I'm going to kind of try and get the middle, not there, the middle, there we go. So and I'm going to fold these over so I've just wrapped them the whole way around so there we go, we've wrapped all the way around and then I'm going to turn it over again 
and wrap the whole way around until they're crossed. Now they need to cross so they're on the right side, so not actually crossing the wires, but crossing sort of the actual mandrel. So when we look at it, we'll be looking at it. At this point, we can see three wires on our ring mandrel. And if we were to turn it over, there would be just two. So that's the point where you need to stop wrapping around the ring mandrel. Now you can do this with, with just your fingers, this initial part, but I like to get this really locked in tight. So I tend to go in with my pliers. So I'm going to grab that top wire and I'm going to turn it a 90 degree angle downwards. So just where everything crosses, I'm going to grab that wire with my pliers and turn it 90 degrees. So it's coming down over the top of these, these wires. Now I'm going to do the same with this one, but I'm going to turn it upwards. So I'm going to grab this wire and turn that one 90 degrees upwards. And now our wires are kind of locking each other together. So if I just pull this one around about another 90 degrees and then this one around about another 90 degrees, I know that size now is locked in there. It's, it can't change until we actually get to wrapping the side. So at this point, I would just kind of squeeze our actual ring shank together, just making sure that's nice and neat. And what I want to do is just bring these around a little bit more until they're actually almost meeting, like so. So this is probably about 90 degrees between them if we were thinking of this, kind of this being 12 o'clock and this being three o'clock. So that's the kind of width apart that we want our wires every time we did make one of our petals. So the wire that's behind, so if we were thinking about going round in a clockwise direction, which is what we're gonna do. So the wire that's behind this one, we're gonna bring round and bring underneath and come another 90 degrees. So you can see we've got about around about another 90 degrees there. Now we can look at this one because this is the, tra the, lead, uh, the trailing wire, the one that's behind. And we're gonna bring this around and underneath this one. And we've got about another 90 degrees there. And that's all we're gonna do. And each time we do that, if I just bring this up, you should be able to see, it's starting to make the kind of little petal designs. So we'll go on a little bit further with this. So pulling this one around and under and give it a really good tug so it's pulling it in. We don't want it too gappy. And again, we've got that, that kind of separation between them. And again, under, and leaving that nice gap between them. So we're gonna continue doing this until we kind of get to the size of flower that we want, that rose size that we want. So, around about there. So I'm quite happy with that, that's quite nice and dainty. So this wire is gonna come across here and wrap this side. And this one I'm gonna bring all the way around to this side here. So we will end up with our wires like so. So just for that last section, we're not going underneath anything, we're just positioning our wires, getting our wires into that nice position so we can start wrapping the ring shank. So we can move our ring mandrel out of the way now and it's very similar to the way that we finished this ring here. We're just going to wrap around this to make these shoulders. So we're just going to pop our wire through, so it's coming over the top and up through. And because we locked in, it locked our size in really well, we shouldn't really have any problems with this distorting. So we can go around a couple of times at each side. So just making sure we've got a really nice tight um, wrap around there. And like I say, I'd like to, because these wires are quite short, so we don't want to waste too much wire. I'm using my pliers to do all of this work for me. Like so, so I've got them really nice three neat wraps on there. And again, I'm cutting it on that bottom edge and then I can give that a nice little squish and it still looks pretty from the front, but there's nothing to kind of scratch kind of at the back sort of thing. So taking that there, that's good. And the opposite side. and keeping these nice and neat. And again, I'm using my pliers, so it's like an extension of your hand 
is using your pliers rather than your fingers. But if you prefer to use your fingers, that is absolutely fine. Just go with what you feel comfortable with. So bringing this all the way around. So that's my last one. Just nipping that in and snipping off right at the bottom again. There we go. There we go, we can see we've still got a really nice shape for the ring. And this one has gone down a couple of sizes, so it's just kind of how you get your tension on things. So I started with an N and it's actually gone down to an L on here. So it's gone down a couple of sizes as this one, but it's probably because my, my wraps are quite thick inside here. So, and I did really lock it in tight. So just have a play around with that and see how your kind of tension goes on with your sizing to it. But it's always gonna drop at least a size. So there's our two rings made. Same as what we have on here. Nice, quick, simple, easy makes. I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. I certainly have. It's one of those that, that you always go back to. It's your simple kind of basic techniques but it is great like I say especially for um, learning the feel of wire learning learning to feel the gauges of wire and, and what they can do so thank you again for watching pop me a like down below if you um, have enjoyed the video and I will see you again soon don't forget to subscribe and you'll get a nice little notification when I pop a new video on thank you see you later